Welcome back to Global News Morning. Really hard to believe that 20 years ago this week, the terrorist attacks on New York City happened. Uh, it's become one of those days of where were you when 9-11 happened? Our next guest was actually on a plane uh, diverted to Gander, Newfoundland, where many planes were diverted. And uh, from this, he has learned to cope, survive, and conquer a crisis by using leadership principles he saw on full display September 2001. He is the author of a brand new book, Leading from the Top, Positive Influence and Heartfelt Resiliency in Times of Adversity. We welcome Elias Canaris. We thank you so much for being with us, sir. Describe your memories of that fateful day. Well, you know, it actually started off as an ordinary Tuesday. And I was on a flight from London, England through to Chicago in the USA on a speaking tour. And about halfway through the flight, Captain Mike Ballard suddenly came on to say to us, ladies and gentlemen, let me first reassure you, there's nothing wrong with this airplane. However, there's been a significant incident in the USA and FAA, Federal Aviation Authority, has asked us to divert the plane to go to Newfoundland in Canada. And to be honest, I had no idea where that was. But we didn't actually know at that point in time what had happened. It was only after we landed, about half an hour later, that we were told all the story. By the time you returned home to Auckland, New Zealand, uh, you must have had uh, some knowledge that this event would be remembered for the rest of everyone's life. And it was a huge worldwide event. Yes, it was. It was a huge event. When we were there in Gander and in Gambo, we didn't realize for the first 24 hours at least quite what had happened because we were actually just stuck on the airplane on the tarmac. And we only had the BBC World Service to give us a guidance. So when we eventually called home, and it took me about three hours to get hold of my wife back in Auckland to reassure that I'd been okay. I'd managed to contact my parents in London and my family in the States. But by the time I came home to New Zealand, I was quite exhausted. And then the reality of what happened came and hit me. While in Gander, I imagine you saw many acts of charity, uh, of bravery perhaps, how did that stay with you to this day? How did it affect you? The first thing that we realized is that um, Ganda had to completely redesign itself. It woke up that morning uh, 9,300 for breakfast. By the time 38 airplanes had landed, the population had expanded to 16,000. So when we came off the plane, the first thing that we saw once we went through immigration and we went through security was food that was laid out for us. Can you imagine that? 24 hours on a plane, we'd run out of food, almost run out of water. And yet we saw people sitting there with Subway sandwiches or KFC. And we thought to ourselves, wow, this is nice. And then we got onto a bus, which took us that 40 minute journey to Gambo. And that's where we stayed at the Salvation Army. And when we were there at the Salvation Army, again, a massive feast was laid out for us. And it was absolutely unbelievable. People had raided their pantry, their fridge, their freezer to feed us. Man, that was really, really touching. One of the things you talk about in the book and keep coming back to is uh, about witnessing incredible leadership. Uh, how does that apply today in the time of a pandemic or uh, in the event of any crisis? I think leadership is very important. And what we learned back in 9-11 is just as important today as it was back then. In fact, whether you're leading uh, an organization or just leading your family, it's important for you to understand how to lead. And there's probably three leadership lessons that we picked up quite early on in this experience. The first leadership lesson is you have to take control of yourself. Now, when you look at this situation, in a crisis, you've got to be able to go and ask for some help. If you can't get yourself organized, how can you lead anybody else? So we've seen through COVID here today that mental health is a really big issue. So you've got to be able to go out and ask for help. We've seen people who've been struggling going from paycheck to paycheck. And what we need to do is encourage them to find out ways to ask for help. 
if taking control of yourself first is the first lesson we learned, then the second lesson we learned was to build and expand your community. We realized that uh, in Gander, they could only help to cater for us and look after us and keep us safe if the community came together. And we witnessed that when we were at the Salvation Army, where people were looking after us. Now, as a leader leading my family or leading an organization, I need to look after my people and spend time to make sure that they are okay. And when we do that in a time of crisis, there's people all around us in our community who are lost, who are hurt, who are in pain. And it's up to us as leaders to go out there and recognize that they are in that situation and figure out what we can do to help them. And the final thing that we learned was that you had to change the rules because when you come to a crisis like 9-11, it just completely stops. And whatever you're doing beforehand does not necessarily stay relevant going forward. For me, as an example, I was a workaholic at that stage, and I realized that I had to stop, relax, and start to smell the roses. And that was something that was quite a big change for me in my life. I love your messaging. I really do, sir. Uh, it sounds like anyone can learn to lead. Yeah, I think anybody can learn to lead. People say, uh, are leaders, you know, born? Um, well, leaders are always born. Actually, babies are born, but people start to become leaders. And when you think about this, we can learn how to lead. Just because you have a title doesn't make you a leader. You can be somebody in middle management. You can be a stay-at-home uh, mother who's looking after the family. You're still a leader. And I think that it's important for us to understand that we should encourage leadership at all levels and throughout all age groups. I see in my daughter and my son two incredible leaders who are very, very influential within their peer group but they can also be influential for people who are older than them. And I think that's important for us to understand that leaders can develop and people can lead. Truly an honor to speak with you, Elias. Um, once again, this is Elias Canaris. He is the author and he's a leadership expert. The name of the book is Leading from the Top, Positive Influence and Heartfelt Resiliency in Times of Adversity. It's been a true pleasure. We thank you, sir. Thanks, Bill.